Greetings. I greet you in the name of the Lord and welcome you to this uh, process of discovering the riches in God's word. And we continue our journey. I'm Pastor Harshaw and we're coming from First Baptist Church, 101 South Wilmington Street in Raleigh, North Carolina, where we believe in the power, the ethics of the kingdom of God, but also the advance of the kingdom. And uh, we are citizens of the kingdom because we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And we rejoice in this opportunity to gather around his word and know that we're empowered by the presence of God's Holy Spirit in our lives, but also following upon us, uh, you and I together, as we discover the riches in God's word. And we simply are looking for spiritual blessing, but also we're asking for an increase, an extension of territory, and an anointing of the Holy Spirit so that God's word may come alive uh, before us and in us as well. And so I want to direct your attention once again to 1 John, the second chapter. And there are two verses there that we um, lift up today for, uh, for our lesson. And it comes again from the second chapter of 1 John. And it's verse 18 and 19. And here's what it says. It says, Dear children, this is the last hour. As you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of, of his word. And we uh, are here for this hour of renewal. And re renewal comes through our opening our hearts and our spirits to God's precious word. And no matter where you are in your spiritual journey, uh, you can be renewed. And because transformation is taking place in us and we continue to grow in Christ and we're being formed into the image of, of Christ and uh, God is working with us. So you can't give up on yourself and you can't give up on other people because we're all in process in that sense. And so it's a blessed thing that God loves us in that way and that we have been extended the grace of God that we might then grow into what God has for us in terms of uh, our journey. And so we believe that, that in hearing the story of the gospel, the good news gospel, and hearing the story of people's encounter with Jesus Christ, that it does something for us and it makes a difference in our lives. And then as a result of that, then we are in a position to act as witnesses in the world and to share with others uh, what that story is all about and what the good news really means. And we live in a day and time where good news is what we yearn for. And then it's a challenge for us also. It's uh, more than just hearing, it's more than just sharing, but it's also living that out. And that means application of God's truth to our lives and we would pray to our society as well and even to our world and that means that as we apply the word then changes take place that are good that are positive and that really uh, make a difference for us and the others around us and so we've been going through first John and on last uh, session when we were together we talked about the stable foundations that exist in the word and particularly in in these passages where we are then challenged not to love the world more than we love God uh, but also to live in love and not in lust and and to live in love and not in hatred and so that becomes in a, a, a solid foundation in your life and mine and, and and today the question for you is and for me is uh, what time is it and uh, this passage lends itself toward that that question as we understand what is taking place here among the people of faith and they're going through what you might call a doctrinal uh, test uh, in other words they're trying to test uh, what uh, belief is about Jesus Christ as the Son of God as the Messiah and uh, what is true and what is false and it is so important at some time to really uh, make that distinction between uh, what is the truth and what is a lie uh, and particularly in terms of the way we conduct and live our lives and so we don't want to live in deception uh, we don't want to live in dishonesty and we don't want to live 
uh, being uh, hid from the truth and definitely the revelation that comes from God through through Jesus Christ and and and, and so the uh, the reminder to the body of faith here and the community of faith in this time uh, is that uh, time will not last always we saw that in verses 15 through 17 as well that what we know as the world uh, spiritually really is is passing away because God's kingdom is advancing and God is doing something in the history of the globe as well as the human race and so God is acting and we don't always see how God acts but often the handwriting as the prophets say is on the wall and so when we are spiritually attuned when we also have the gift of discernment sometimes we can see things beyond the natural that then warn us or provide guidance for us, which is really so important in terms of living out uh, of our lives. And so there's a reference here, according to the commentators, that that, um, that, that that the Antichrist is lifted up here. And the Antichrist, probably in the context of this message and this community of faith, are, are those false teachers who have come in to the life of the church, uh, come in amongst good people, and uh, they're teaching them the wrong things. And they're telling them lies and they're teaching them things that aren't right and they're doing so in the name of god and and so then he warns them but he writes them uh, in order to signify the reality of a, the adversary and the adversary in these passages mean the adversary of christ and christology or who christ really is sometimes people just want to make jesus as a regular rabbi and teacher uh, people want to make uh, Jesus just another human being. And and what the church was establishing in doctrine and in what they believed, that Jesus was more than just another person and some community leader, but rather he is the Son of God. He is the promised Messiah. And he is the, the avenue by which the human race is saved. And, uh, and it was so important for them to understand that and not to be caught amongst those who were then denying uh, the divinity of Christ or who Christ really is. They, everyone knew he died on Calvary and some believed he died as a criminal uh, to the government and some believed he uh, died as a false leader to the religious order. But we believe he died for the sins of the world and rose again the third day. And as a result then he is God and he is the son of God. He is the Christ, the anointed one. Jesus is the Christ. And sometimes you have to fight for what you believe in, and you have to fight for your own doctrine. Uh, you have to fight for your own vision in life. You have to fight for your own belief system, because we live in the context of a world that may steal that from us and take that away from us. And people who try to dilute what we believe about ourselves or about what God has spoken over our lives. And, and there are forces that will do everything they can to get you off track and to not believe what God has spoken to you or what you truly, truly believe within yourself. And, and that's part of what is, is happening here. And so some of them also left uh, that community. And the reason they really left, number one, is they couldn't get their way. And it's interesting when somebody has their own personal agenda and they come among a community of faith or good people in a society and they push their agenda and they're with you and they count themselves as part of you until they can't get their way. And when they can't get their way, then they leave. And then they usually leave as demons do and they bash you as they leave. And that's kind of a principle in the New Testament when when demons left people, they, they're shrills and there's anguish and, and sometimes very dramatic departures uh, as they leave a, the presence of a person, a spirit, as they leave a household or relationship or whatever. And so these people were like that in that sense. They couldn't get their way, so they left. They left the church. And you see a falling away because of those people, but the elders writing to the community of faith and reminding them that that's okay. That's what happens when the spirit of the Antichrist is prevalent. And when people believe their own uh, theology rather than what thus saith the Lord, well, then they tend to have that kind of presence in the midst of a community of faith. And so they leave. They didn't get their way. They weren't the ones chosen. Uh, this, the song that was chosen wasn't their favorite. Whoever gets to read the scripture, it wasn't them. So they have to leave. 
Uh, they can't uh, set up their own ministry within someone else's ministry, so they leave. And, uh, and you just say, well, God bless you. I hope the next trip for you is a good one. But we're doing what God has led us to do. And so we're going to stick with what the Lord is saying to us. And, and so in a sense, then, by the writing here in 1 John in these two verses in 18 and 19, it, it really is a ministry of unmasking um, and then revealing what is counterfeit, uh, superficial, untrue, or unreal. And, uh, and, and you know that as you follow the hand of God uh, through the word as well as through history, God allows the unmasking sometimes. Because uh, sometimes we think things are well and good, whether that's in your relationship, your marriage, your household, on your job, or whether it's in your society, or even if it's in the life of your church. And then all of a sudden, things take place to help you to see that it wasn't as good as you thought it was. And so as a result, then, now you have things that you must address. And that's what we're living through in these uh, United States of America as we are going through all of the unrest and um, all of the protest and, and all of the chaos that has taken place and all of the rhetoric. Uh, we were saying that things that have been entrenched and hidden in some cases is now coming to surface. And so as a result, we've got to deal with it because that's the way we get through it and overcome it. It's been there all along. The issue is that it's been hidden or suppressed, and now is the time to just let it out. And so as a result of it coming out, then you see what is really taking place, and you see who people truly are, and sometimes you see what people really feel about you, and you see systems that have been placed uh, that keep you from being the best person that, that you can be. So that, that's what's happening. And in some cases, you can call that judgment, that that's like we're being judged as a nation. Um, because we have sown certain seeds and now they're sprouting and then they're blooming and as a result then uh, we have to see ourselves as we are and that's when the, the Bible becomes a, like a mirror image uh, like when you look at yourself in a mirror you see the blemishes and you see the beauty or you see uh, of what is good there but you see other things as well and it's helpful every now and then to look in a mirror as you're getting dressed or before you leave home because the mirror will reveal things that you may have missed. And so as a result, you can fix those things because it's reflected in your reflection. And so God's word can do that for us as well. And that's what was happening there. And, and the issue um, as the unmasking was taking place is uh, who would persevere and who would endure in, in the midst of all of this. And so he's simply encouraging the writer, simply encouraging those recipients of this letter uh, this edification is to continue to hold on, to hold on to God's unchanging hand, continue to do what is right, continue to follow what you've learned about Jesus Christ, continue to hold to the revelation no matter what, uh, what took place. And so it reminds us also that there's a, a visible church and then there's an invisible church. The visible church is when people are gathered together and they, they dress up to come or they dress in the ways that they dress and they gather together and they're there physically. But, but when people gather, whether it's a day of worship or any other day, it, it doesn't mean that everybody present is on the same page. And it doesn't mean that everybody who's in the house of worship is there for the right reason. And it doesn't mean that everyone there has been prepared for eternity. Uh, and, and so you have the invisible church um, that also is, is the real church. The visible church is one church. The invisible church is the authentic church. And so what he was speaking to then was what you might call the invisible church uh, that, 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 that no one can really see. Uh, you see what is uh, first at hand, but you can't see people's hearts or their minds or their motivations. But God does and God knows. But usually there'll come a day and a time of testing. Where, where the unmasking takes place. A person who comes in your life as a fraud can only uh, hide for so long. Then there'll be something that comes <laughs> to bear in the relationship that then reveals that person for who they truly are. And, and if you're a spiritually minded person, you thank God for that because otherwise you would have been fooled uh, thinking there's somebody that they're not. And this way you see, and then sometimes that even happens in our own journey, that we think we're something that we're not. And so God begins the unmasking 
process by some calamity or some illness or some misfortune or some other way that God may use because then you, you, your, your true self is revealed. And then you say, thank you, Jesus, because I never would have known that because somehow I was believing a lie about myself. And, and so you don't want, we want to live in truth. And so as a result, we want God to do what only God can do in our lives in order to reveal what is really taking place. And, 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 so, and so then we're told that here we have the description of the end and the end before Jesus comes. And that's so debatable because they thought it was imminent. That means it was just coming like tomorrow for them. And now centuries later, we're still in this dispensation of this season and time um, of waiting for what all of that means. Uh, but the end time is talked about in the scripture and Jesus talked about it, which we will see just a little bit later. And, and so there, there are many then who come in this context against who Jesus Christ is and, and some of those who we've seen who are misguided and they leave the church or they stop preaching the gospel or they stop praying or they stop reading the word because, because now they've been unmasked and now because of problems or difficulties, whether they're on your job or in your relationship, or in your home or whether they're in society, reveal what you really are, who what you truly are. And so in troubled times, then who you are begins to emerge. And so, and so we want to apply that to our national, um, uh, our national reality as well and know that, that let's see who America truly is uh, because now it's being revealed at a whole nother level. And I'm confident that we can move through this and overcome it and become a stronger and a, and a better nation. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean then that we're not a part of that process, that we have to work toward that and do our part. And, 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 and so the, the lifting up here is of the followers of Jesus, and they are to hold fast to the teaching about not only Jesus' humanity, but also his Messiahship, which means that he indeed is, is the Son of God. And, and so what comes in from the elders, what, what could be called uh, uh, an emotive proclamation, and that is filled with emotion. Remember, he speaks as a pastor. He has um, a loving heart. He says, uh, you know, dear friends and uh, children and all these are very uh, wonderful terms of endearment. And so he comes out of a place of love when he comes to correct uh, as a good parent will. He's not coming from judgment and, and, and revenge or, or anything like that, but rather he, he comes in love to correct in order to bring the whole community together in order to get the family then to work together. But sometimes to do that, you've got to say very hard things to say. And that exactly is what, what is happening here. But he wants to remind them then to have confidence in God and in God's promise of eternal life. And every now and then we just have to remember that, that this world we live in isn't the only reality that is ours. And so we can set up camp here as if you're going to live forever, but you won't live forever and I won't. And so it means that if we have to set in order that eternal reality that is coming for us at one time. And we believe that the best way to do that is to discover that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so if you get caught up with who Jesus Christ is, invite him into your heart and into your journey. Acknowledge that you really need the Lord for help. Well, then you will discover the way, you will discover the truth, and you will discover the life, which is life indeed. And that life then, according to the scripture, is an eternal life that, that, that is established with a quality of peace and and forgiveness and reconciliation and restoration and mercy and grace and love and the list goes on and on and then as a result your life will change and our lives will continue to change because uh, because of what God is doing and offering us another kind of living that really secures our our present but also our future and so he wanted he simply wanted them to realize that but but the spirit of the Antichrist will come and Turn with me to Matthew's gospel, and you have the scripture references there, so you can go back uh, on the handout. Matthew's gospel, the 24th chapter, and uh, we see that then Jesus, as he talks about the destruction of, of the temple, he also talks about the signs of the times. Uh, and so this is really helpful, and you'll want to take time to read through this uh, uh, on your own in order to really get a sense of it. But But here we see that that Jesus says, uh, even beginning with uh, verse 4, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, 
claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things much must happen, but the end is still to come. And so a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of birth pains, he says. And then down in verse uh, 21, he says, for, for then there will be great distress unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. My Lord, what a promise. At that time, anyone, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the, the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. And so we see this warning from the Lord. And on down, as we go on down to verse 30, uh, 34 and following, Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never, never pass away. But what about the day or hour? No one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days at, at the coming of the Son of Man. For in, in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, and one will be taken, and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a, uh, with a hand mill, and one will be taken, and the other left. And then the urging is, therefore, watch, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Well, what a powerful word that that is indeed. Turn with me for a moment to John, the John's Gospel of the 15th chapter, and we'll get a chance to uh, 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 to deal with that reality in terms of the security that we have um, in Christ. And so the, the spirit of the Antichrist, it says, will come, is already exists. Uh, that means false teachers uh, with all the wrong motives are seeking to mislead people and lead them astray, saying things that simply are not true. And here it says, and we know uh, we now know that they are in our midst, that they are already here in the spirit of the Antichrist. And so referring to the people in the church who left that church, um, and then he says, you know, if they really had belonged to us, they would not have left. But the fact that they left indicated that they really did not really connect with us. And sometimes people are in the midst, but they don't, they're not receiving the truth. Sometimes they're around where God is moving, but their hearts are not open to let God move and enter in. Sometimes people read the same truth that you read, but yet it doesn't penetrate their spirit because there's no openness there. And as a result, when they fall away, they were never connected in the first place is what the elder is really saying in his point here. And so, and, 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 and so there here is the, the presence of a, a certain uh, phrase that then functions in a certain way. It's called the pluperfect in the original language here. But what it really means is they would have remained. Uh, if, if they were with us in spirit, if they were really on our side, if they were really part of our team following the risen Christ, they would have remained. Because that's what people do who are following. In verse 19, it lifts that up. And and, and it means that, that there's, there are times when we can live uh, by abiding in the presence of God and all that God does. And there is a being or a way of life out of God. It, it, it means that you have decided or someone has decided that they're going to live their life without God's help or guidance. And so in that sense, you can describe it as not abiding and being out of God uh, simply because 
uh, a decision has been made to leave God out of the picture. And any time we leave God out of the picture, we're in trouble. Whether it's in our personal lives, whether it's in our nation, whether it's in the life of the church. If America leaves God out and we don't repent and deal with our issues, we're going to be in trouble. And, and you haven't seen the worst of it yet. But if we simply follow what the Lord has laid out for us, well, then that's the hope and that's the promise of abiding. And so then let's just look for a moment at John's gospel, the, the 15th chapter. And it talks there and you can read it for yourself uh, in that passage. And so Jesus starts in the first verse, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. And Jesus then says in verse four there, John 15, he says, remain in me abide in me stay in my way whatever's happening around you as also i re remain in you no branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me and so there's something about remaining in the lord and what god has provided that provides a protection for us and, and this whole thing of abiding and remaining appears 27 times uh, and it, as it talks about in Christ as we, as we really abide. And so the question then emerges, what time is it? What, what are the signs of the times? And the only way to really discover that is really uh, to begin to open your heart and open your mind. Uh, to what God is doing. Let's look at one last scripture out of Matthew's gospel, the 16th chapter. And I'm going to invite you to read and study for yourself those other scriptures that are listed uh, on the handout. And we see here in 16, uh, 1 through 4, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Jesus and they always come to test him by asking him to show them a sign. They wanted to see a sign from heaven and he replied when the evening comes you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red and in the morning today it will be stormy for the sky is red and overcast you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky but you cannot interpret the signs of the times a wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign but none will be given except the sign of Jonah What's the sign of Jonah? Well, the sign of Jonah is a metaphor for the fact that Jesus died and rose again the third day, that he died on an old rugged cross for the sins of the world, for your sins and my sins, for the salvation of this human family. And our hope is in Jesus Christ. And when we are linked to Christ, we can abide and we can be strengthened and we can find our way. And so again, we ask, what, what time is it? And it's so important as you look at history and understand people who really saw the times. Winston Churchill saw the gathering and made a decision to change the world. Uh, Woodrow Wilson did the same thing when he had the League of Nations come together. Martin Luther did the same thing when he saw the Catholic Church was off base and needed to return the word of the Lord to the common folk. And then out of that came the Reformation. Martin Luther King Jr. saw it when segregation was on its deathbed in America and he was searching for a just society. And then we can read the signs of the times. And so I say to you again, what time is it? What time is it? And so as we search that out, I encourage you to read those other scriptures before we come back together and allow the Lord to lead you through some of these passages so you can read more than what we've read today. And then ask God, Lord, what time is it? Well, we know now it's our time to end. So let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you uh, for the revelation of your truth and your word. Lord, we pray for this world. We pray for our nation. We pray for your people. We pray for justice. We pray for your peace. We pray for righteousness. We pray for truth over lies and deception. We pray for your way as you have asserted. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. 
No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No person who wants truth can avoid Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray in your name. Bless your people. In Christ's name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. God bless you.